Welcome, Global Supply Chainers. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Eva Ponce. I'm the Executive Director of the MITx MicroMasters Program in Supply Chain Management. And it's my pleasure today to convene the staff and the community who make this program possible. To congratulate the new credential holders, 383 new MicroMasters credential holders in supply chain management. Welcome to the MITx community, to the now more than 2,243 credential holders in this program. I'm very proud of this cohort because in this unprecedented time, among shutdowns, among the outbreak, you were able to make it. And this is, this is huge. It is also especially clear for me that online and digital education in supply chain management matters now more than ever. So thank you again for joining us. Today we are going to celebrate this important achievement. And to do that, we have a very special guest today with us. First, I want to introduce to you Dr. Chris Capis. Chris is the executive director of the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. Chris is the alma mater of this program. He inspired all of the SEX community of learners, and he's also inspiring the MicroMaster team. Chris has spent countless hours filming videos, creating this program, and developing this program. He is, among other things, Chris is the director of the Freight Lab at MIT and also a successful entrepreneur. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks, Eva. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not the special guest. I think that's for someone else. But uh, thank you. So, let me just give you some quick history here. It's almost six years to the day, almost, that uh, Sanjay Sarma first asked me if I wanted to create a MOOC on supply chain management that could perhaps be an X series of three courses. At that time, I didn't know what a MOOC was. I literally had to look it up because at that point I'd been teaching here at MIT for a little over 10 years in logistics systems. And so I thought, why not? How hard can it be? And so me, a half-time TA and two undergrad assistants spent the summer of 2014 creating that first course that eventually became SC1X. Um, and at that point, everyone was just trying to figure things out. Um, I was literally handed a Surface Pro um, and a portable microphone and said, just do it. And so we were figuring it out on the fly as we went. The MITx team, Dana Doyle, Shira Frookman, and eventually Lana Scott were great in getting the courses out, but we really had no clue what we were doing. Um, we ran it in the fall of 2014, the first course. And so some of you might have been on that. Uh, and I apologize in advance because we were overwhelmed. I, um, I was not fully prepared when we started it. And this is actually where week zeros came from. I found out I could add a week zero and thereby delay the launch of the real course. And so I took that so I could finish recording some of the later lectures. That's, that's a little history. Um, but we knew we were onto something when we had over 30,000 learners on the first run. Most of them audit, but they're very excited, very uh, interactive. And it was just me, my halftime TA, no community TAs, no course leads, nothing. We are totally overwhelmed and underprepared. And that's when I learned the importance of having the team. Um, Running these courses is harder and more important than the actual content created within the courses. Uh, creating the, the videos once, it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's nothing compared to the effort and energy it takes to run these courses and work with you. And that's the thing that makes it better. So in the fall of 2015, we were again approached by, by Sanjay and others in uh, the administration to see if we wanted to be the first ever MicroMaster system uh, credential. And so this was a big deal because this is the first time that MIT and other universities would grant college credit for actually completing these courses. So it brought everything the game to a whole nother level. We said, sure, we'll do this. And over the next six months, we created, recorded, and launched three new courses to round out the five course SCX MicroMasters that you know today. Um, and this explains why the analytics course became SC0X because we already had a one. And so I couldn't shift them up. So we kind of made it work and put it together. And this is where the team became more important. And we started growing the team. Uh, most importantly, Dr. Ava Ponce, who came on board and really runs the team and is the reason why it's been as successful as it has. 
Now we've learned a lot over the last six years, 100 plus hours of videotaping, 37 course runs and six CFX exams. Um, and these lessons have changed the way we teach here at CTL. It's changed the way that I teach and approach my students, no matter whether I'm teaching them online, uh, asynchronous, um, on, online like what we do there in person or what we're doing now where it's synchronous online over Zoom. It's totally changed the way that I approach this. Um, and I think it's safe to say that I've learned more from working with and interacting with all of you than you've learned from me. I've always been amazed and impressed by the dedication, the grit, and the determination displayed by all the MicroMasters learners. I could not do what it, you did to earn this credential. It's in, so impressive. And as I travel, I always try to meet the learners. I've had uh, meetups in uh, London, China, Malaysia, Singapore, Mexico, across the US, anywhere I travel. And I promise as soon as the, one, the uh, shelter in place is lifted and the pandemic uh, dissipates, then I'll be back on the road again. Hopefully we can meet face to face instead of over a Zoom channel. So finally, congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for all of your dedication and hard work. Welcome to the uh, MicroMasters credential holders. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And um, thank you also for allowing me to be part of this fascinating team and fascinating program. You know that I love this program. And since January 2016 that I joined your team, definitely have been very busy, but I have had a lot of fun. I need to recognize this too. Next, uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Alexis Bateman. Alexis is one of our longest serving course leads and she delivered the most recent comprehensive and final exam during the COVID-19 disruption. Alexis leads the MIT Sustainable Supply Chain Lab at CTL, and she is also a very well-known speaker in this topic. She, she is joining today and is going to share some uh, words with you too. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you so much, Ava. And so, just for today, I wanted to share a little bit of behind the scenes and, and bring some fun stories to share with all of you. But first off, congratulations to all the credential holders that finished. We're really proud of you and we at the SEX team have been rooting for you since day one, since you joined us and we've been rooting for you to finish the program. Uh, as a course lead, I've seen the amazing amount of commitment from learners to finish the program and it never ceases to, to impress me, just as Chris said, so challenging and amazing the work you guys have put in. Uh, but this is particularly when it comes to the CFX, the comprehensive final exam that, we, that many of you just took in March of, of this year. I actually ran the first CFX back in 2017 and then now have run the most recent six CFX. And just for fun, I pulled up some stories to kind of chronicle the finish line of this program. And these are directly from you. So, uh, and been checked to make sure I could share a little bit of the stories. But in our very first CFX in 2017, we actually had our youngest learners ever take the exam at only 15 years old. Can you believe it? We had them come and take the exam and finish the entire program. And now they're actually entering college. So I, I thought that was a pretty amazing story and one we often look back to with smiles. We had a learner finish the exam, the comprehensive final exam, an hour before they were set down to walk down the aisle to get married. I don't know about you, if you got married, I don't think I could have handled getting, finishing an exam and then walking down the aisle to get married. Pretty amazing. And another who completed the exam while his wife was in labor to have triplets. So now that is some amazing focus, but glad he finished it before those babies arrived. One learner shared with us that their mom in, is actually really happy about the CFX because it, it forced them to clean up their room and that she hopes that they take that there's a CFX every month because they can have a cleaner room. But this year in particular, we really had some phenomenal stories around the world from learners who went through impressive lengths to take the CFX. One learner with many echoing similar stories shared that they took the CFX amidst the growing plant global pandemic during a national lockdown in India on Friday the 13th and emergency sirens blaring in the black background. Some learners were rushed home to their home countries due to national callbacks. Others had to find places to hide in their home away from their family to take the exam during shelter in place. But despite these events, 383 learners were able to take and pass the exam to receive the credential and take the next step in their supply chain journey. That is truly amazing. 
And coincidentally for our team, on the exact days of the CFX, MIT was actually shutting down the university and moving remote. And so we were still able to hold the exam and have you guys take it. I think that that is something we will all always remember. Thank you for allowing me and our team to be a part of your journey and careers as supply chain professionals. We at the SEX team rooted for you during the journey through our program, and we will continue to root for you as you take the next steps in the supply chain management field. Make us proud. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you for sharing this uh, with the group. I still remember in May 2017 when I asked for the ID verification to the 15 years old uh, learner and he told me, my mom is at the door of the room and say, oh my goodness. And yes, I'm so proud of these uh, learners. They pass, they apply for college, amazing. This is really, really amazing. Okay, so, um, I also uh, would like to thank everyone on the course team. It really takes a tremendous effort to bring these courses to you each year. And we could not do it without the tireless effort of everyone. And first, uh, here is um, a picture from our last staff meeting where you can see the core team. And I need to especially thank you to the course leads for the their passion, their dedication to this program. Alexis, Sergio, uh, Dave, Imma, uh, Atiye, and also Bedrier, Sam, and Arthur. They are really doing a tremendous effort to bring this program to you. And I can't be more proud of this. I'm, I'm more, I'm, I can't feel, feel more fortunate to have this smart and inspiring team working for this program. Also, um, we have MITx supporting us and open, open learning at MIT. And I need to thank Shira. Shira is supporting us every single day with all of the technical issues that we, we have one day or the other. Also, David Chotin with the uh, verification and enrollment issues. Lisa Ekel helping us to, to schedule a lot of meetings just to coordinate. And also, thank you to edX. edX uh, is, <clears throat> has been collaborating with us closely in order to provide a, a good learning experience to you guys. So thank you to Madi, to Libby, thank you to Mike, to Liz, to everyone that has been supporting uh, our team and our learners. And also a special thank you to our teaching assistants. Jay and Shovik. They are answering every single email for you guys. And I need to extend that also to the amazing community of teaching assistants, our volunteers across the world, those who are uh, helping you through the forums, those who are uh, in a volunteer manner sharing their knowledge and their learning with you all through the discussion forums. Uh, over the years, more than 130 community teaching assistants have given their time and expertise to other learners in the forums. So thank you team, thank you extended team, and thank you to the community for all of your efforts in this program. Next, we have an inspirational message from Jackie Sturm. Jackie is an Intel Corporate Vice President and the General Manager of Intel's Global Supply Chain Management Group. Intel, as you know, is frequent, frequently recognized for high performance as winners of Intel prestigious Quality and Achievement Awards and was most recently cited by Gartner's as number six in its top 25 global supply chains company. Jackie is also a member of Intel's Ethics and Compliance Oversight Committee, and she leads the Supply Chain Environmental and Social Governance Program. So she was so nice and so kind to record a message for all of you to celebrate you as a su supply chain professional. So let's hear some words from Jackie Storm. Congratulations, graduates. 
Earning the MITx MicroMasters credential demonstrates continuous learning, which is fundamental to both personal growth and to supply chain professionals as we all grapple with the changing world, new business models, and the many geopolitical and competitive challenges that increasingly confront our companies. Although past supply chains were characterized as primarily procurement and logistics, today's supply chain is a key player in C-suites around the world, and that's due to the strategic importance of understanding customer needs, designing the products and services that will delight them, and being able to deliver on time and at the right price to meet customers' expectations. Truly, the breadth of supply chain is astonishing. Today's challenges associated with COVID-19 illustrate just how important the supply chain is to our way of life. As I like to tell my team of supply chain professionals, we are everywhere the money is. And in light of the shortages and delivery challenges we face during this global pandemic, we are also everywhere the supply is. Through our knowledge, strong relationships, insight and preparation, we keep the world moving forward. Ensuring that our frontline responders get the protective equipment they need, food can get to those who are sheltering in place, and the digital infrastructure needed to connect everyone together is vital and vibrant more so than ever before. I am thrilled for each of you, whether you're just starting out your career in supply chain or you're continuing to build on your supply chain acumen. You will be happy because supply chain is an area that's pivotal to every aspect of modern life. Recently retired from SCM world, professional expert Kevin O'Mara said it quite concisely, supply chain saves the world. In essence, we do this by relentlessly increasing global productivity and access to competitive goods that make our lives better. As you go forward, I encourage you to think about how your new skills enable you to understand the environment, sense changing dynamics, identify and evaluate opportunities, to build resilient relationships to rely upon, and to operationalize all of these factors into your daily job. If you can bring those professional capabilities to bear, you too will play a role in saving the world. Congratulations. Thank you, Jackie. What Jackie mentions is so relevant in times like we are in now. As the term supply chain management has now become more well known around the world, a global audience is finally recognizing the vital role that you all play in our society. As Jackie mentioned, supply chain management is pivotal in every aspect of modern life. And we are all thrilled to have played a part in each of your career paths. So to find out uh, what you are doing and this impact on you learners, what we are doing now is just to invite some of our learners to share with you their experience. First, Pavitra Gopal. Pavitra is a senior business analyst at Sonos. Um, he, she's here in Boston and completed her credential last March 2020. So Pavitra, Please share some of your experience with this group. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Eva. This is Pavitra. I'm one of the um, spring 2020 um, graduate of the supply chain program. Um, I first want to take this opportunity to thank all the course leads and the um, MIT team for coordinating and putting together a great supply chain content has been hugely beneficial for me. Um, one of the reasons why I took this course was because I've had a wide exposure to procurement, logistics, um, supply chain, and sales and marketing area. And I was looking for a career change in that I wanted to go deeper into one of the areas and be a expert in the field of logistics. And so um, this course has been a tremendous, um, tremendous uh, help for me in that regard. Um, and I'm sure it is for the other um, MicroMasters learners here too. Um, we've all spent, um, days and nights sacrificing our uh, weekends and our time with family to get to where we are today. So I also want to um, offer my congratulations to all of you and all the best to all your future end of years. Thank you. Thank you, Pavitra. And you are totally right. A lot of days, a lot of nights, a lot of weekends spent in this journey, but you did it. So congratulations again for that. Next, I would like to invite Danielle Proctor. 
Uh, she's a new credential holder. And San Juan, I had the pleasure to meet in person during last summer during the MIT Supply Chain Bootcamp here at MIT. Danielle, she's an inventory operations manager at Penguin Random House in New York. And previously, she was working at Wafer. She once told me one story that really impressed me. At some point, Danielle was almost about to give up the program. It was exactly when she was taking supply chain analytics, <laughs> the most, I would say, uh, arid course that we have, or the most dry course that we have with tons of math. Um, but finally, Danielle did it. Um, she's one of the highest scoring individuals on the most recent comprehensive final exam. Nice job, Danielle. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. That's really exciting. Um, yes, I came from, uh, I do not come from a math or engineering background. Uh, I have a degree in sociology. Um, and so while I've had a couple of operational roles, I've never really been exposed to the underlying theory behind any of these um, uh, topics until I started with SC0X. And it, it wasn't during SC0X, it was week three of SC0X, the minute after you introduced mixed integer linear programming. That was my, <laughs> that was my moment. Um, and I, you know, it was just totally foreign to me. And I was like, I can't, what was I thinking? I can't do this. This is wild. I don't have the math for this. I don't have the school for this. Um, you'd really have to understand him. But my husband is British and very dry and looked at me and went, huh, who would have thought that MIT would be hard? And it was like this total perspective change for me where I realized that I, challenges are not a personal failing, a failing. I'm being challenged because it's challenging. And if you look at it not as sort of a, a barrier to your success, you can see it as an opportunity to, to overcome and to prove yourself and grow. And it was, I mean, these courses have been unparalleled in growing my, my technical knowledge. But beyond that, I think it's been uh, personally for me, just a really amazing opportunity for growth. And so I, I wanted to, to thank you guys for giving me that opportunity, giving me an opportunity to share my story and giving me an opportunity to, to grow as a person. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle. Thank uh, you. Um, thank you. And as you can see, there is a huge variety of different applications for the MicroMaster credential holder. And this can be as many as uh, your own career path that you have or can lead you to advance your degrees academic uh, or advance your degree at MIT or at any other universities around the world. Um, we also ask a poll after completing the comprehensive final exam um, we asked you in one word, what is the most valuable aspect of the program? And here are the results. And as you can see in the slide, uh, knowledge, learning, practical, relevance, these are the most popular words. And we are so happy to see that. We are so happy to see that after six years that we started with the first, um, Chris Kaplis started with the first MOOC, uh, still today uh, we are receiving this outcome. I also want to uh, highlight here that you mentioned community and connections in the world cloud. And I wanted to thank Arthur Grau and Sam Varney for their fantastic work creating this community of engaging learners and also for running this event behind the scenes. So Sam and Arthur, please join us and share some works with this group. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was just really great to see that community is one of the pieces that you guys thought was important for the program. Um, I and Arthur really enjoy talking to everybody through the chats on LinkedIn, um, helping sort of organize the global meetups, which we hope to continue and do more of. Um, and it's just been really great to see you all online and some of you on campus. So, yeah. And I'll second that. Um, I've, been, I've been in the chat as we're talking here, and I, it's just such a joy to see everybody from every part um, from Nigeria to Singapore and from Kazakhstan to uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, joining, being a part of this program, making it work for yourselves. And I think 
this group is especially an outlier group. You are self-starting. You're, you're causing meetups to happen on your own. You're asking us, how can, how can we do more? How can we be better? And it's just so inspiring um, to be part of this group. Along with um, Sam's slide that um, she created here with the survey, we got a couple other of survey results. Um, this is just a, a graph of when all of you, at least who responded to the survey in this cohort, started the program. So we have people who started as far as four years ago and who are just completing now. Um, and I think there's a couple of liars on there who said they started in winter of 2020. I doubt you completed all the courses since winter of 2020, but maybe there's some miracle that can happen there. And part of the community, part of the listening that, that Sam and I do and bring back to the course team is trying to understand and learn and react to what do you want out of these courses? And of course, to gain experience, maybe to apply to a master's, um, but maybe to change your career or, or gain a promotion. So we try to listen to those things and bring them back to the group. Excellent. Thank you, Sam and Arthur. And for myself, it is a source of inspiration and ongoing pride to be part of this massive and open initiative. I'm still fascinated when learners from around the world re reach out to me and send a note and say, Eva, some, they have some content questions or they just say thank you. Thank you for uh, delivering this program. Um, None of this would be possible without the vision, the technical expertise, and the ongoing hard work for everyone at edX. And for today, I, I have invited edX CEO, Anand Agawar, to say a few words, because we have surpassed today 2,000 credential holders in the MITx MicroMaster program in supply chain management. We represent one of hundreds of programs available on edX. And I thought it would be further inspirational to hear from the founder of edX. Dr. A. Agarwal is a professor of electrical engineering and computer science here at MIT, where he served as the director of the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab. He's also the founder and CTO of Tilera. Um, he serves, as I mentioned, as, as the CEO of edX, our joint partnership between MIT and Harvard University. It's really an honor to have Anand today with us. Thank you, Anand, for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Eva, for uh, inviting me. Uh, I, I almost felt like I was in a dream for the past 30 minutes throughout this program. And it was so inspirational to, uh, to hear some of you, the learners, uh, who have completed your credential. And uh, I know, uh, you know, it seems, okay, I've completed uh, a MicroMasters credential, but I think we should be saying that you are all uh, MicroMasters credential superheroes. It is incredible. I mean, what you have done is absolutely incredible. Uh, um, many of you are working, many of you have families, uh, many of you are holding down a job, and, and to be able to do this stuff. And, uh, and I know some of you may have found uh, the material easy, but this is hard stuff. I remember as a uh, undergraduate in IIT Madras, one of you mentioned uh, mixed integer linear programming. And uh, I'm not sure, uh, Eva and Chris, if you guys teach simplex anymore, but I remember uh, doing some uh, doing some linear programming uh, as an undergraduate in IIT Madras in 1981, probably before many of you were born. And I remember that was hard stuff. My head used to hurt when thinking about integer programming and 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 you know how those lines, you know, it, it was optimizing optimizing some of these logistical things was so hard. And you guys are just uh, you're nailing it. I'm just so impressed. And so I would call you superheroes, not just for having mastered uh, this, amazing, uh, this amazing program and, and graduating, but at the same time while living life, uh, you know, and, and dealing with all the issues of life. Frankly, I think that what you all have done is actually the future of education. You all may think 
that oh, you know, this is something uh, uh, specific or special that we have done. But I believe you are the future, and the future is now. Uh, it, it, it really didn't take COVID-19 to tell us that online learning uh, as a way to augment campus learning is so important. Uh, COVID-19 has really highlighted for us the importance of having a mix of learning modalities, both online and uh, in person. And, 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 and I will promise you that in the future, more and more universities will be offering blended learning opportunities uh, uh, to campus to campus residents. Uh, in fact, about four years ago, uh, we did an experiment on campus at MIT where volunteers from my circuits course at MIT were allowed to take a completely online class at MIT as part of their uh, MIT credit worthy programs. And uh, uh, the study was pretty amazing where students loved the flexibility and so on, and they felt that every university should offer some percentage of its courses fully online, even for campus residents. So I believe that online learning and blended programs is the new normal. And the supply chain team, we're one of the leaders. I mean, they recognize this. Uh, they launched the first MicroMasters on edX, and they, they, they are true pioneers on the teaching and learning side and the credentialing side, just as you are true pioneers on the learning side. So it is just such an honor for me to be here among all of you and hear such inspirational <clears throat> stories from learners like yourselves, um, who I call the MicroMasters credential superheroes. It's so inspirational to, for me to hear the uh, words from uh, Chris Caplice and Eva. Uh, and again, you know, th th these guys are just so incredibly modest. Putting together a program like this was hard. Anything new is hard. Anything new at a university is even harder. Because at university, one of the most common ways of saying no to something is, oh, that's not been done before. That is tantamount to saying no. And, and when, when, when Chris and, and the MIT uh, team and, and the supply chain team and others were thinking of doing this, there were every, all kinds of no's that kept coming up. Oh, uh, how could we do this online? There's no way we're gonna have you know, virtual proctoring around the world. You know, how do people go to exam centers? I mean, everything was new. What is this new credential? Um, you mean, can people learn something with just half, uh, you know, 50% of the time of a master's? I mean, of course, it's yes to all of the above. And so the MITx MicroMasters team, uh, the TAs, the, uh, the professors, uh, the uh, MITx learning team, the edX team, are all superheroes because almost everything was new. And, and everybody is out there saying, no, it cannot be done. I promise you, many of you in your own families probably told you, oh, no way you can do this. What? You are going to, uh, you know, you are going to be earning a MicroMasters credential from MIT? No way. This is hard. But you all did it. And 2,000 of you did it. I'm just so proud of what you, all, of what you all have done. And in many respects, this has been the story of edX. Uh, uh, we started about, uh, uh, it's amazing, and uh, uh, we announced MITx on November 19th of 2011. And uh, almost uh, 10 years ago, I just cannot believe that uh, this amount of time has passed. And we started out with, oh, let's launch a free course. Uh, it was called a MOOC, horrible term. And at that time, I was asked, you know, what should we name this effort? And uh, we were making up things in five second intervals and we had no idea what to call it. So I said, uh, uh, you know, the early days, you know, uh, along with some of my colleagues, Raphael Reif and, and many of the other leaders at MIT, we said, you know what, we don't have time to hire a marketing firm to think of a great name. And so we codenamed it MITx. Because we had no idea what we were doing. We made it up in like seven seconds flat. And people asked us, what is X? So we looked at each other. And uh, I was saying, oh, X is infinity. And uh, uh, I think somebody else said, X is, you, you fill it in. And yet to another person, X was, oh, it's cool. Anything with an X is cool. And so um, it was codenamed MITx. And then when we announced it, it was announced as MITx. And then many reporters asked us, oh, this is such a cool name. Uh, you know, which agency did you hire to get this name? We said, hmm, that's not bad. Let's call it MITx. And that's how MITx became MITx. And then the X became fundamental to our being. 
uh, when MIT and Harvard teamed up to launch edX together. And, uh, and they've been amazing. Uh, if not for them, there's no way we could have launched as a nonprofit. And, uh, and, and, and Harvard's effort became Harvard X. And then we had to pick a name for this new entity and uh, it became edX. So, you know, everything is an, is an X. And we started off with offering a free course. And then in the free course, we launched it with a certificate. And people went, hey, well, ah, you know, how can you offer a certificate with an MIT or Harvard name on it? Well, we did. And today we have 3,000 courses and we have uh, much more than a million students who have, like you, all over the world, who have earned these incredible certificates from some of the top institutions in the world. Then we said, all right, let's try to, a lot of learners said, okay, one course is one thing, but we need to learn more. So we said, let's create a program. And so we had no idea what to call it. So it looked like a sequence. So we called it X series. And uh, now how do we get some crazy people to do this crazy thing? And uh, guess who we approached? Uh, he's sitting in this call here, uh, Chris Kutlis and the MIT X team uh, from supply chain. They created the first X series program on edX, which was a sequence of courses. And that was scary. New York Times, a theme I learned from the New York Times had a headline article which said, wait a second, now edX is offering sequences of courses? This was in 2013, I believe, when nobody else had the courage to offer sequences of courses. And your headline said, what is edX going to offer degrees next? And I knew the, the end of the world was here because I was getting you know, major angry phone calls from every university saying, how could you do this? But with the help of uh, Chris and others at MIT, we launched the first X series program. Berkeley came up with the second one in, uh, uh, it was in uh, uh, cloud computing uh, software and Ruby on Rails. And then we said, you know, we have this program of courses, we're gonna give a certificate. And then we said, you know what? We have to create MicroMasters programs. And the leadership at MIT was truly pioneers here. And MicroMasters had many scary things as part of it, really, really scary. First of all, it had the word masters in it. And suddenly people will say, oh, wait a second. Uh, you know, for masters, you have to come to campus. It has to be one to two years. And so, uh, and masters implies credit and credentials and proctoring. So we solved all of those problems and we launched the first micro masters on edX from uh, MIT and uh, the supply chain group at MIT. And then today we have uh, 55 micro masters, including one on AI from Columbia. We have one in robotics from Penn. We have uh, you know, a number of 56 of them today from 30 to 35 universities, all of them programs that lead uh, into pathways. And about two years ago, we've also launched full degrees online. And one degree I'll particularly talk about is a master's degree in supply chain management. And that is an absolutely radical degree that MIT and Arizona State University put together, two incredibly pioneering institutions. So there, you can complete the MicroMasters credential like you have at, uh, uh, on edX through MIT. And then you can apply to join the master's degree from Arizona State University. And so here is a master's degree from the number one and number two supply chain programs in the world. How cool is that? You complete one credential from MIT, you can apply, and then you can complete your master's degree uh, uh, it's almost like putting Legos together. And I like to call it Lego education. And I see a future of education where everybody is going to be learning online and in person, where you will be learning pieces of education, whether micro masters or micro bachelors, learning these pieces of education from multiple universities all over the world and online and in person. And you'll be stacking them up into credentials and getting incredibly cost-effective and quality credentials from a number of universities. And, and don't forget it, on this, on this screen in front of me are some of the incredible pioneers, both on the supply side and also on the, on the content side and the learning side, and you are the pioneers, and the first of a new cadre of learners and superheroes that I think will take us into a whole new world of education in the future. So with that, congratulations again, you know, I'm just so, so honored to be among you uh, who've done this just absolutely amazing thing. Thank you again.
Thank you, Anand, for your kind words. And yes, we are still teaching uh, linear programming and simplex. And our learners, I, I believe they are able to redesign the supply chain networks in order to face the growth of e-commerce and the outbreak of the COVID-19. Yes, thank you for bringing that. This is really inspiring, uh, Anand, and very relevant more now than ever. And thank you. Thank you for your tireless effort to bring high quality online learning to the world, to anyone from anywhere. And let me share now some quick statistics about our own MicroMaster credential program. Um, as you can see, the number of unique learners enrolling our program is now more than 350,000 learners enrolled in any of the SEX courses. If we have a look into the verified learners, we have almost about 25,000 verified learners pursuing for a certificate and almost 12,000 learners who have earned a certificate in any of the SCX courses. And the total number of MicroMaster credential holders, what we are celebrating today is 2,200 and 43. And our learners come from all over the world. As you can see in the map, we have learners from USA. We have learners from many different countries, from India, from Canada, from Brazil, Mexico, from Spain, yes. We have learners from all over the world. They, most of them are professionals working in more than seven, 700 different companies. And we have learners from the ages of 15 to more than 80. Um, not only uh, you are now a credential holder, also many opportunities are going to be open for you in order to advance your professional career or your academic career with, a, with an MIT master's degree, an, a, a master's degree here at MIT or at any of our MIT scale centers in Zaragoza, in Luxembourg, in Malaysia. So far, we have 112 graduated students, students who have completed the MicroMaster credential plus the MIT blended degree at MIT or any MIT scale center. And 54 current students who are almost about to graduate this May 2020. We also have, as Anand mentioned, more than 20 universities that are offering master's degree programs as pathways to credential holders. Arizona State University, a AACU, is one of the first that is offering an online master's on edX. We are so proud of you all and cannot wait to see where your next steps is going to take you. Um, as current events show, supply chain management is critical to the world, now and always, and you, pl you all play a part of that. So we are heading to the end of this celebration. And to acknowledge the completion of the program of the sixth cohort, we are now going to roll the names of the most recent 383 credential earners. Please enjoy this moment and use the chat to reach everyone in the group. I will be back in a minute. Enjoy that moment. I can speak now.
from the whole MIT CTL team. Congratulations, everyone, and thank you very much for being here today. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations.